Well, here we are again. The saga continues. We're still trying to bleed the brakes. So let me show you what we're up to. I went ahead and ordered this brake line. This is a German brake line, apparently, from uh, Wolfsburg West. And this is for the right rear. When I tried to bleed my brakes, you always start with the right rear. Right away, I had problems. The bleeder valve, when I opened it up, nothing came out. So I started poking around down here and, and try to figure out what was going on. And I actually removed the brake, the bleeder valve completely and nothing came out. Um, then I, I think I disconnected this and nothing came out. So I figured there must be some sort of clog in the line here. So I'm gonna replace this portion partially because when I was bleeding the brakes, I built up the pressure and it started to make like little bulges in the line. So I'm gonna replace it. Hopefully this is still good. I don't know if I've replaced this myself already or if this is the original brake line. But let's start here. I'm gonna check to see if I can blow air through that and go from there. All right, out with the old, in with the new. It's interesting, it says 69 right there. Anyway, it says SAE approved. So they're basically the same lengths. That's where it was like bulging up. Yeah, I don't know if it's clogged or not. Let's find out. You hear the air coming through? This one? Nothing. <laughs> so apparently if there's something in here that's not letting the brake fluid get through. I have no idea what it is. It could be a bug. It could be dirt. I don't know, man, but it sucks. So got to replace it. I will be probably going back and uh, replacing the other brake lines, the rubber line section with this German brake line. A little more expensive, like I said. I think it was like 24 bucks. It's worth it, I think, when it comes to your brakes. You want to get the best quality parts. And I recommend investing in a flare wrench. So yeah, I'm just going to tighten this up and get the clip on. Finally got a day off. Got one yesterday and I had a surprise one today. My supervisor texted me and said, you don't have to come in today. So I was like, yes. Hopefully get some work done on the bus. Two of these are going to go for the front and one's going to go for the rear. So I'm going to go ahead and slap these on. Hopefully they fit because I have disc brakes and I don't know if they fit disc brakes, but let's see. All right. Well, we're in the left rear. I think this one might be a little easier to get out. Um, I did find my missing vice grips. <laughs> I had left them down here from the last time I was connecting my clutch cable. It's a little bit easier to get to this one right here. It's just this. And then right there, let's uh, disconnect it. Shouldn't be any brake fluid in there left. It's all drained out. All right, so the easiest way I found to remove these clips here is with the pry bar. You just kind of uh, get it in there and wedge it out. It's easier than like trying to use some pliers or whatever to, to pry it out. But um, yeah, it works pretty good. The other thing I'll say is this is a 17 millimeter on one side and then it's 14 millimeter over there. When I tried to um, blow air through this one, you can hear it. it's kind of clogged a little bit. Let's try this new one. Nice and clear. So that was actually the other reason why I decided to replace all four of them. I didn't want to take the sticker off until I was sure it was the right size. So I'll have some fresh, new, soft brake line section. Make sure that's nice and snug. I don't want to over tighten anything. I definitely want to make it tight. All right, we're in. Let's do the front ones. I think I have uh, replaced these ones in the front. They look pretty good. I mean, they're, they seem like they're in pretty decent condition, so they should be fine, but since I already have the German ones, might as well just replace them anyways. Probably easier to do this with the front tire off, but I don't want to take off my front tire. All right, so there's the top one. And if you spill any brake fluid anywhere, make sure you wipe it off right away because it will eat through your paint. 
so comparing the old one to the new one, the old one is a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and put the new one on. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is connect it here because you can spin it. And once you connect the other end, you're not gonna be able to spin it. Connect this end first. All right, so that's gonna be there. Yeah, that's plenty of length. I'm just gonna connect it up on top and we should be good to go. Okay, we're up at the right front. Made it a little easier by turning the wheel. Give me a little bit of better access in there. Anyone in there? And bada bing, bada boom. This job is done so far. Now I should be able to bleed the brakes. Today happens to be my birthday. So I am going to pick up where I left off with the brakes. But eventually in the future, I will just replace the entire metal brake line system. Um, but for now, hopefully this soft brake lines uh, replacement will allow me to bleed the brakes and I can check that off my list. And then hopefully I can um, also do the alignment because the alignment is off. <laughs> You see my front wheel there is turned to the right and the other one is straight so it's really bad um but that's because you know i changed the whole front end and changed the tie rods i had to put a shortened tie rods because it's a shortened um narrow beam i'm gonna try to do this look at how bad this is <laughs> my front wheel is like pointing to the right I'm gonna... okay so where are we at with this alignment process so what i did is i measured from here to there 77 inches and the same thing in the front so that's 77 across to the other side i measured the distance from here to here made sure it was equal on the other side same thing in the front it's a little bit tricky with the front right wheel because it's a little bit crooked so i tried to measure from the center of the cap made sure that's equal on this side same as the other side so we got a square Hopefully we can do this alignment now. So, all right, we're gonna check my measurements again. Four and six eighths. Yep. All right, let's check the other side. I might be off. It might be off because I did move those around. And this one is four. Oh, this is five and a half. I'm way off. So, this needs to come over about an inch. So I redid my measurements again. I think I'm ready to get started on this alignment. I mean, looking from right here, you can kind of see it's uh, pointing in a little bit here. But let me show you how bad, how much off <laughs> this is. Back of the rim, it's at six and nine sixteenths. Mm -hmm. And then the front, it's at seven <laughs> and five eighths. Pretty bad. Let's try to straighten this out. Slight adjustment here. I needed to, basically what I did is I got this wheel lined up with about an eighth of an inch toe in in the front. So it's a little bit closer in the front. And this one is so far off, <laughs> it's two inches off. I'm gonna disconnect the tie rod and move it over and just get it, you know, close with the measuring tape. And then I will reattach the tie rod and then do a slight adjustment with that. You can see the threads right there. So I'm just gonna disconnect it, get the wheel straight, and then re and then spin that tie rod in to where it lines up with the steering knuckle, and then adjust it from there. Okay, so I disconnected the tie rod, and then what I'm gonna do now is get the wheel within, you know, a decent range. I'll measure it. Then I'll lower the car back down and then do my adjustment because you want the car to be seated on, uh, you want the weight on the wheels because there's, uh, you know, the angle of the wheel changes. All right, so now let's get it pretty close. Okay, actually really close. 
So we're at seven. Make sure I get it on the rim and not the tire. So we're at uh, about seven right there. And then we go to the front of the rim and we're right about seven right there too. I think I, I said I wanted a slight toe in in the front. So it's a little bit towed out right there. It's about seven. And then in the rear, what I'm gonna do now, is if you look, my tie rod is no longer aligned. So that means I need to spin this out to get it to reach and line up with the hole. Yeah, see, yeah, I don't have enough thread, so I need to put that back in a little bit and bring the inner tie rod out. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I think I'm getting farther away. All right, let me turn this in this way. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going out now. I'm getting closer. Okay, so that's good to know because when I do my adjustment, now I'll know which way to turn it. Still pretty far off, which means that, see that's kind of loose there. And I still need to come out. Uh, not too much. That's not enough threads right there. That's, that's, uh, that's barely hanging on by like a thread, as they say. Let's see. Oh, we might be okay. All right. Yeah, we're. I think we're good. All right. Let me uh, tighten this down. Get that in there. Put the bolt on, and we should be good. All right, so let's see if my little trick worked. I think I'm within 1 16th of an inch here. So if you can see right there. Okay, then in the front, it's a little under, about a 16th of an inch. So I want about a 16th of an inch toe in. Let's check this side. Right, right on seven right there, right on the money. And then the back, I should be out past seven. And I'm up out about mm, 16th, you can see that. So overall, all in all, pretty good. My wheels measure the same distance, over here, over here, from the string. Check this side, same thing. I do have a low air pressure on that one, so that could have a small impact. I'm not sure I'm gonna get the air pressure back up. And then my steering wheel is off. Now that has nothing to do with the alignment. Many moons ago, you can see it's, it's not straight. Uh, I pulled the steering wheel off. That's where all this crack, these chunks came off from. When I pulled it off, I don't remember how I did it. I didn't have the right tools and I chipped and broke all this off. I do have a better tool to take it off. So I'm gonna take it off and then just put it straight because my wheel alignment should be straight. So my, my steering wheel should be straight. So ignore that. If you're doing an alignment, if you've never taken off your steering wheel, your steering wheel should be straight. But if you're like me and a lot of uh, bus owners, you don't know what the previous owner did. This was actually me that did that um, when I took it off. When I put it back on, I didn't put it on straight. Um, my wheels were probably turned or something like that when I put it back on. So that I need to work on. So, but I think for now, I think my alignment is pretty good. So my brakes are bled. Little tricky with the uh, offset here because uh, 
the staggered wheels, you know, the back wheels stick out farther than the front wheels because I have a narrowed beam. But uh, for just doing the front end alignment, you should be good. So uh, camber, I still need to adjust. I'll do that later. But I did want it to at least drive in a straight line. And the uh, camber needs to be adjusted. So that's the angle of the wheel like this and like that. It was really bad before my wheels were wearing out on the outer edge all the time. And now I don't know yet because I need to adjust the eccentric bolt to get the adjust the camper. So I'll do that a different day. Uh, that I'll use a level for. Thanks for watching my video on DIY wheel alignment. Let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me if I did a good job or if I'm terrible and I need to quit. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Thanks for watching.